Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to JC Student Spotlight. I've got a wild one today. The awesome, the wonderful, and the great Nick, uh, who had an overwhelming amount of votes to be on Spotlight today. How are you doing, Nick? I'm doing great. What's up, people? How are we doing? <laughs> We're doing great. You sent the link out to all your friends to watch you and that big smile of yours. That's the thing that I always think about when uh, someone mentions your name is you're always smiling. <laughs> that tends to bring out attention, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, tell us before you became a JC student and started to get into entertainment or have that itch to do entertainment, what was Nick doing? This little background on Nick. Well, um, when Nick started out living, um, brought to this world. He was, he was pretty bilingual in both American and Portuguese. He's from a Portuguese American family. You know, they say it takes a village to raise a child. So everyone knew everyone born up in Danbury, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And at the age of three, I ended up losing my speech. Oh. I went, yeah. And it was pretty intense for my parents. I went completely mute. My mother always blamed the vaccinations, immunizations, all sorts of causes. Doctors thought I was autistic, but we didn't believe it. So I was sent off for speech and occupational therapy for months and months on end until eventually I reached preschool, kindergarten, and they enrolled me in resource assistance until freshman year of high school, which eventually became my turning point. And around that turning point, I looked everywhere for extracurricular activities. I mean, I had my general sports like soccer, swimming, and then I also was ROTC. I always liked to be involved. I was a, quite a console personality. So I had this willingness to serve and help others. Mm -hmm. But I never got to thinking about entertainment until I hit high school. And when I hit high school, I saw theater hit my mind. And the teacher said, enroll in speech. Art. I said, okay, sounds good. <laughs> so I'll jump right on in. Let's do it. <laughs> Audition, gave my, yes, yeah. <laughs> Jumped right on in, gave it my all. Eventually got a call back the next week. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, we're booking you a role. It was a minor role, actually. It was a high school musical on stage my junior yeah. year. Make sure. <laughs> Right, that's it. everyone when they say they did a play in high school. I'm like, oh, what'd you do? Did you do high school musical, Rent, or one of the other five plays they always shuffle around over the last 40 years? <laughs> <laughs> well, when it hit high school, it was actually they, my freshman year. They did In the Heights, which is pretty big, and also Once on This Island, my sophomore year. I never, never really hit me until junior year, though. For high school. And that's when I went high school musical. I was a little upset. I didn't get a big role, but at the same time, the one line I had was like, is that a guitar? Is that a saw? Like that, get that little <laughs> super dude mojo. And, I, and then eventually my senior year, I did this amazing musical. I still fall in love with this day. It's called Godspell. Mm -hmm. And then the, the best thing about it was that it's, ethically and morally substandard and it helps others connect it was about love and posterity being brought to the community there's a yeah. bunch of cultural diversity growing up up north so that's what was the greatest thing about it overall well two things about you talking about your line that's such a great thing that you said that because we always talk about if you only have one nine nail that line right so you were like, I'm going to deliver this line. This is going to be the greatest line in this show today when I deliver this line. Was that your feeling? That was the feeling eventually as when the live performances came on. I was like, okay, I got to give this energy. Next yeah. thing you know, was the most comedic line <laughs> given out in the entirety of the musical. That was, so you were in musical, so could you sing? I can sing. Oh, now I'm not going to ask you to sing. I saw you <laughs> can't sing. Where is this going? No, I'm not going to ask you and make you I gotta, sing. I got to thank my mother for that one. She Oh, your mom's she really a is pilot. So I kind of I kind of look up to her for the singing, the dancing, going live. 
she's kind of the one that pushes me out and says, hey, go try things. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't hurt to try it. And that, she put me in choirs and everything. She always got me to read up on the altar at church. Yeah. So she always wanted me to boost out of my comfort zone, no matter how stressful. Her encouraging. Or scary. Encouragement, encouragement. Awesome. So we always talk about that support systems are important. Uh oh, I wasn't going to make you sing, but we got people in the chat says, let's hear something. So, I mean, I can't. I can't ignore it now. <laughs> I, I can sing a little something. Well, let's let's see what you got. I'll, I'll give you some Marvin Gaye, actually. Oh, oh, okay. You're a little young. Let's sing an appropriate Marvin Gaye song. No, I think all Marvin Gaye songs are appropriate. You need a countdown or are you good to go? What do you need? I'll, what do you need? Do I'll surprise you. All right. Let's go. Ooh, go. baby. Ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide, no baby. All right. I'm jealous. I'm jealous because I can't sing for anything. I'm jealous. And then Rhonda said, just a little, oh, okay. So she likes it. I'm going to, you know, that clip's going everywhere now, right? Hey, let the world hear it. <laughs> All right, so we're doing the musicals in high school, and um, I don't want to. Are you in a college dorm right now? No, I'm actually enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. I enlisted back okay. April 25th of last year. Okay. Um, I was in college for two years, but I kind of wanted to change the scenery. Not only did I want that challenge, but kind of something traumatic happened back at home. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I was my older brother. Um, had gone through substance substance abuse, mm -hmm. and we found out it was Percocet. It mm -hmm. was pretty terrible watching the current the sequence of events happen every day. He would lock himself in our basement, kind of have this irritability and intense depression we had to deal with, and to keep it safe for my parents, I wanted to as much as possible, but at the same time, I didn't want to be in that part of the environment. I wanted to make them proud. Okay. And so I enlisted into boot camp. And after I graduated, when they were down there, they were hugging me in tears, crying, crying, saying, I'm so proud of you. And so, and I hear that he's in therapy. He's in rehabilitation. So it was such a miracle to hear. Right. Those course of actions and you're doing that. You're going to well, thank you for your service. I'm a 20 year. Uh, Army vet. I'm not going to hold it against you that you went to the Marines, but hey, the service, <laughs> service, right? And so now you're taking that beacon and doing something for the family. I mean, you're super talented. You can sing, you can act. Now you're in uh, military serving our country. So you're doing all these wonderful things. Um, how did you get to this point? As in getting into this agency, you're asking? How are you getting into John Casablanca? What what drove you to say, hey, let me go and get some training? Because you're in the Marines now. And a lot of people would think once you get into the Marines, because I did this when I'm in the Army. And so they think, hey, you just be focused on the Marines. But that's not what happened to you. You still had this passion to do entertainment. Um, why? It just never left me. I, I always <laughs> thought there was passion built inside me. I mean, when I was in my first two years of college, I did what I could. I was in another musical mm -hmm. called <laughs> Wait, and, bigger, role, bigger role? No. <laughs> bigger role. The only big role I had was my senior year. So, okay. Yeah, um, and after the pandemic hit, it was just kind of a shutdown from all of that. But I didn't want to give up. I never wanted to let that passion go. Right. And, Marine Corps is also another reason so I can get out and explore, see what opportunities I had in store. This is actually a funny story how I discovered John Casablancas. Right. Um, you, know gonna... you know how Marine Corps are, life of the party. Yeah. <laughs> Here I am with my one of my best buddies hung over at McDonald's, <laughs> just looking at my phone and contact information and all of a sudden, John Casablancas pops up. There's the agency. And I'm like, put your contact information down. I said, all right, I'll fill it in. 
at noon, I wake up to a phone call saying, hi, this is Lisa from John Casablanca. So I'm for Mr. is he there? I was like, I'm like, yeah, that, yeah, that's me. She's like, are you still interested in this thing? Here I am, like a George Lopez. Am I still interested? That loca, that loca. <laughs> <laughs> of course I'm interested. I want to jump on this. So I said, all right. And then, how would you like to audition Tuesday? I'm like, I'm in. Eventually, it led me all the way here. I, when you had that first class, uh, walk me through that. You had the first class. Who did you have? And what did you like about that first class that you had? I had Coach Tequila, uh -huh. Goddess. And, did you say um, yeah, Goddess. <laughs> she's, a little, she's almost as good as me. No, I'm just kidding. I, just, <laughs> I mean, I only had you for one class. I heard great things about you from the previous interview. So uh, I hope to have you in more classes, though. All right. For sure. Um, but Coach, and <laughs> Coach Tequila started out for me, and it was uh, goal setting, so I believe, mm -hmm. and planning. And she just gave me a wide span of how I can accomplish those goals. And I've heard a lot about investing in money, high management, organization, you know, your usual goals you try to accomplish daily as a human being. And, you know, when you get, it was so, how do I put this? It was emotionally surreal how you can meet such a crowd that has similar interests in me but at the same time they can also relate to the goals they want to accomplish so for me it was time management and between here and the civilian world i'm able to make the best of both worlds because of what john casablancas teaches me every day what's been your favorite um session so far I gotta say improv with you was hilarious. Wait, are you saying that because I'm on it? See, this is what I gotta do. I gotta start saying <laughs> your favorite session that didn't involve me when I have you all on here. Cause I don't want you to feel like you're pressured to say me. Even though I know you're needed, I know someone eventually is gonna say me just because I'm here. But um, since you said that, why was it? Well, one for certain, I got to get out of my comfort zone a little more and then Two, you kind of pushed me more techniques that even I didn't learn myself back in high school. And, you know, we'd, we'd get all these exercises to do. And you gave me a different perspective on how to achieve those things. Mm -hmm. And now I'm able to be more active, less of a introverted or extroversion, more of a social butterfly. I'm able to say things that I normally wouldn't just think. I just do it on the spot. Awesome. I, well, I love that. It's always great to get uh, new perspectives because, you know, at entertainment, you train forever. You know, the training never stops. The learning never stops. And sometimes you're going to hear a lot of the same things. And even when you hear the same thing, sometimes the approach to that same thing can be different. Um, how have you been liking the coaching that you've been receiving? Is it versus your expectations? Expectation wise, I am pretty surprised at how organized it was. I mean, I'm looking at this, I'm like, is this a scam? This better not be a scam. <laughs> and I'm like, because you know there's scams out there. They, they don't they don't play around in scandals. But I'm actually glad I found something unexpectedly <laughs> on that one night that can be truly honest with me and gives me great learning lessons at such an exclusive level of training. Like I've, I've heard at the auditions, famous celebrities being trained here. And I was like, Oh, well, a lot of them come out of uh, North Carolina, ironically from this center. So a, a lot of them, um, here's the thing. So we talked about the class that you enjoyed the most and you had the most fun, um, would that be the same class to be set or is there a different class to where you felt you've gained the most fruit from? What was that class that you got so much knowledge from or just surprised you? Um, scene study was another one because I would never really 
dig deep down into the lines I was reading. So whenever the coach would cast us into different roles, I was happy to learn that I can put a character on myself or think the best of it, especially at the end of that class when they gave us random skits or commercials to read off from, like a cold read. And the cold read helps so much because you can, you get a few minutes to analyze that paragraph or monologue that you were assigned and then just read it off the spot of how you feel it would be presented. Awesome. It's, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> so Nick, what year are you in in the Marines? You said you joined back in April, right? So this is the first year. Correct. Right. Uh, how many years did you enlist for? Um, 2025 of April, I get out. I finish my four years. And where are you stationed right now? I'm currently active duty in Jacksonville, North Carolina, Camp Lejeune. Okay, all the way over there on the East Coast. That's close to Wilmington, right? That is about an hour away. Okay, awesome. How's and so how's that going for you so far? Is it just like with JC? Has has that been what you expected? How is that versus your expectations? You know, I like how I can make the best of both worlds with John Casablancas and the military. Although I get I get a little panicky on Wednesday evenings because like I don't want to miss my class six to eight I gotta go, and and they keep you in work really late for some excessive training, or any other tasks need to be done last minute, but all great opportunities so far. Um, so what next, you're saying is you're the only student that if you're late to my class I can just make you do push-ups. Sure. Why not? We'll do that. <laughs> I can do that. Why not? Let's go with it. Let's do it. How many push-ups you give me, though? <laughs> so I, I had you for advanced and prop two weeks ago. You just said you didn't see study. So what have you got coming up next? So I just finished week 23, which was mock reels and scheduling. Mm -hmm. Boarding. I finished that. Love the class so far. So what scene, um, if you don't mind spoiling it, what scene did you pick to do a voiceover for? I think oh, that's the next gotten, Oh, wait, you haven't gotten the voiceovers yet, have you? I think that's the next class for me. Yeah, 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 that's the next one. You were just getting your mock reels. So that means you've created your commercial and monologue already. I have. Yeah. Written by you, right? All written by me. <laughs> oh, this might be good and spicy. Wait, are you singing at any point of this monologue? No, but I'm excessively loud in my commercial. <laughs> and monologue, <laughs> monologue you'll love too. <laughs> You're excessively loud. I love that. What are you yelling at us about in that commercial? I'm kind of doing an infomercial like Billy May style. <laughs> I just made this dumb product about a rag or towel. I call it a shamp towel. Uh -huh. And it's supposed to clean you up in five seconds for like a five dollar. The sham, the chamois or something, or whatever that's called. It's called the sham towel. I don't even know that what the chamois is. <laughs> There's like a real towel out there on infomercials. It's like a supposed to be an amazing towel or something. It doesn't clean you clean you off in five seconds, but you know, kind of that. Thing. So that's pretty good. I'm interested to see that because I want to see you not smile and yell. Wait, are you smiling while you're yelling? Uh, mediocre. <laughs> uh, teeth are shown, just not, not <laughs> smiling like this the whole time. Oh, my God. Eyes they, are wider, though, I promise. You said your eyes are wider? In the performance, yes. Okay. So, Nick, do you have a, a mantra or anything that you use or something that you live by? that keeps you positive in situations? Uh, yeah, I have a few quotes I live by too. Um, oh, okay. One, one's by uh, Winston Churchill. Uh, he says, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Mm. So it's kind of like a back and forth situation. I do something for you, you do something for me. Mm -hmm. I'll help you get somewhere but you got to give me what you got. And I'm willing to try. I'm willing to give it as much effort as possible. Another quote I live by is shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. Meaning if you don't 
get that one opportunity, there's a little, there's an endless cycle of infinite possibilities out there. So don't give up on yourself. So what was that last one again? Shoot for the moon and what happens? Shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. Or you'll run out of oxygen, one or the other. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apollo 13 over here. <laughs> that could happen. All right, Nick. Well, Nick, it was fun um, hanging out with you. I'm glad that we had you on Student Spotlight. It's a, it's a great honor because that means multiple coaches have said, hey, this person needs to be on Spotlight for whatever your many accomplishments in class are, whether that's you're always there, you're always engaging, and you seem like a very engaged person. So, Oh, I'm super extroverted, no joke. Like, my class is a bunch of jokers, but we always end up doing the scene and getting our assignments done together. We always give each other positive feedback and, of course, improvements because there's always room to improve everywhere we go. Well, that, you know what? That's an important thing to do. You you all sit around and you're not sitting here uh, being negative and trying to find something to complain about. You guys get together, work on your material, work things out, give each other a constructive criticism. That's how you create a positive group because you'll all remember that. If you all end up in movies, a uh, big budget movie, you'll remember that. You'll remember when you worked with each other back down at this level. Heck, you'll start recommending each other. Hey, you know, director, I got a guy who would be great at this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right? That's true. That's very true. It's, okay. it's a way to get you to do a lot better than you did before. And you are going to be a lot better. That's the promise given. That's, uh, there goes, there goes your favorite coach right there. Uh, Taz May, that's Coach Tequila saying, yay, Nick, with all of our hearts. Okay. I love her, the queen. <laughs> does that make does that make me the king? Yes, you are the king. No, I'm an emperor. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> oh. upgrade, <laughs> promotion given. So, thank you, Rhonda. Me and Nick enjoyed talking to you both. I hope everybody got um, some insight on Nick. You can follow him on IG. What's that IG, Nick? It is at Nick Veloso seven on Instagram. At Nick Veloso seven because there were six other Nicks before him. So these <laughs> there's one named Nicole and it was just Nick Veloso. I was like, what? <laughs> oh no! We'll find out. You got a twin sister somewhere, Mom. <laughs> you lied to me. <laughs> Almost sung that. You almost sung that. Well, you know what, Nick? We're gonna we're gonna hit him again just for those that came a little later. Go ahead and hit him with a goodbye melody. Goodbye. Love you guys. Take care. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Catch us on the next student spotlight.